I really enjoy um, understanding different relationships between people and people in the environment and what, what ties them to the environment and I suppose that's what makes me love geography. The question in geography is why the map looks the way it looks and so what? How does it matter for people? How does it matter for society, for economies? The geography course at Oxford suited me best because it was quite broad to start off with and I liked that as a fundamental base, is that I could really develop my physical geography um, as well as my human geography. Geography is the sort of course where you cannot get bored. Um, you, you study various different things. One week you can be studying, I don't know, the weathering of rocks, whereas the next minute you can be talking about uh, the experience of walking down the street and the politics of moving around. The course starts fairly rigidly because we want to lay the foundations in the first year in the basics of physical, human geography, geographical controversies and geographical techniques. Everyone needs to get up to speed on certain things so you may be studying statistics but that does, shouldn't put you off because it's great to have a certain level. In the second year you choose between two or three sort of foundation courses so um, there's human geography, physical geography and a more sort of environmental paper which I guess combines the human and physical elements. So. What is really flexible is that students choose three from a range of 15 or more options. My typical week as a second year geographer probably involves about two or three lectures and then one tutorial a week. At the start of the week, uh, I'll get a reading list from my tutor that week um, of different books that I need to read for that tutorial. Um, I'll probably spend about two or three days going through and reading them, um, and then one day writing the essay. Students decide on their own uh, dissertation topics. As long as they're academically viable and practically feasible, they can study uh, whatever they please. I did my dissertation about holidays um, in the mid 20th century. Uh, which is kind of niche, I guess. So mine was an archival-based uh, dissertation. So I spent a lot of time looking through old people's old holiday photos and uh, Butlin's brochures and things like that, which was, uh, which was quite interesting. There is fieldwork both in the first year and in the second year of the degree. In first year, you spend two sort of days away doing fieldwork in the local area. In Tenerife, we um, were split into teams and we basically had two kind of topics. We were going to do two fieldwork projects while we were out there. Um, and uh, one that I did was sustainable tourism and the other one was to do with botanical gardens. The kind of person that sort of does well in geography is a person that's interested in the, the people, the processes and the problems that are shaping our contemporary world. One thing that I'd never come across before I came to Oxford and actually was kind of teased about it was that you colour in all day and you shouldn't forget your colouring pencils. Um, I would just like to, <laughs> to say I have not used my colouring pencils and since before A levels. I really enjoy going to the library and, and finding the different books that I need. There's, they're so well stocked and um, there's some really beautiful libraries in Oxford. Oxford Geography offers exceptional facilities. Uh, to start with, the Bodleian Library Map Room has one of the biggest collections of maps and geography books in the world. I find it really, really helpful with my dissertation especially because quite a lot of the books were quite niche and quite specialist and it was helpful to sort of have that facility there. We have all kinds of equipment needed for field work, uh, especially in physical geography. We have a luminescence dating lab, which helps you to date uh, precisely whatever artifacts, whatever rocks, materials you collect during your field work. Places like the Botanical Gardens in Oxford, it's a great kind of place to um, just enjoy your surroundings. The tutorial system really appealed to me, so the opportunity to sort of interrogate a topic in a lot more depth week in, week out, and discuss that with a world-leading sort of academic or researcher. If you're taught by the best researchers in the field, this translates into great teaching, because it's like being taught to drive fast cars by Lewis Hamilton or by Jensen Button. Yeah, you have to be very talented to keep up, but what a thrill and what an exciting opportunity it is. And there is no limit to how much you can learn if you're taught by people who really are the best. So I guess when I first came, the tutorial system was a little bit intense. You're not kind of used to being put on the spot to the sort of extent that you are in a tutorial and, and made to back yourself up and answer questions. The tutorials are really great at getting you to understand a topic way more than just what you might have learned in lectures or read in books. There's the opportunity to sort of pursue new avenues and new directions and consider things in a different way. And if 
if you're interested and passionate about your subject, it's not something to really be scared about where your teacher's sort of grinning you every week. So what is great about Oxford is that tutors are available at colleges and at the department, but the trick is really to keep asking them, what else can I do? How can I improve? You are largely focused on your weekly essays because that's how you learn, is you're very self-directed and you have to go to the library and you've got to read the right things to include in your essays. I probably spend about 30 hours a week on my tutorial essay, I guess, so it's sort of three eight-hour days and then six hours writing the essay. It's difficult to, uh, to take writings by the Nobel Prize winner critically, but this is what we expect right from the first year. Oxford kind of teaches you to sort of think in a way that interrogates everything and takes nothing for granted and, and teaches you to sort of develop your own opinions about everything. It doesn't matter whether you studied it formally, it doesn't matter actually whether you've travelled much or, or very little indeed. It's about this kind of curiosity, this interest in detail, in difference, in diversity between places, peoples, uh, cultures and uh, landscapes. I never really thought I was capable of applying to Oxford until um, a girl came into my sixth form college from Mansfield and did a little presentation and, and that was the point where I thought, you know, actually I can give this a go. It's not just about having a million and one extracurricular activities and grade eight and flute and being part of the school debating society, you know, as long as you have an interest in your subject and you're passionate about it and you're good at it, that's all that matters. Interviews are obviously a very important part of the process. Typically students are interviewed twice by two teams of uh, tutors. I remember thinking, oh my goodness, this is probably the scariest thing I've had to do in my academic career so far. But actually was so relaxed and almost enjoyable, if such a thing can be enjoyable. We often use uh, maps, we use uh, graphs, we use photos, satellite images or even rocks and we ask students to, well, to make sense of what they see. So it's very important to actually think on your feet, apply your knowledge, rather than coming with a, a kind of a rehearsed story to tell about how good you are and what you had done before. It was very much like a tutorial is now. Um, it was my tutors or the, the interviewers asking, um, asking questions and, and trying to really draw out of me how I get to certain answers. Interviews cover both physical and human geography, so one has to be prepared for both. But having said that, I wouldn't prepare in too much detail. It's important to come with an open mind. Have an idea of, of what you're interested in and specifically, you know, if you're interested in climate change, read up about climate change, have a few of your own thoughts about what we should be doing. It is about being ambitious, about being courageous, about not, let, not letting yourself think that uh, because I don't know anyone who studied at Oxford or because no one from my family has gone to university before that I shouldn't study uh, at Oxford. If you have a passion for geography, if you have good GCSEs and uh, good predicted A-level results, uh, then you should definitely apply. I was, I was working at Sainsbury's at the time uh, when I was accepted at the course um, and I was, it was there on a Saturday morning and the, the letter had come in the post that day and my mum came and brought the letter to me while I was working and I read it there and I remember just being really excited and, and happy to start sort of thing. I never thought I'd get into Oxford, especially after having so many interviews as well, like having five, it was, a, it was, it was pretty pleasing, yeah. I actually got the letter and my brother was standing behind me and had read it quicker than I had so I, I was still on like the first line and he was like congratulations <laughs> and so Geography gives a very broad range of transferable skills from quantitative like climate modeling, statistical modeling, satellite image interpretation to qualitative like analysis of texts, images, uh, creative writing. Geographers go into a lot of different things um, and it's the skills that you use as well as the degree kind of subject um, and you learn a lot within geography. Many students work in the public sector, they become teachers, they work for government departments and maybe up to 50% of students go on to do further degrees. I would like to go into something into like international development and um, I'd love to work abroad. After I finish uh, my degree, I'm going to teaching. I've got a job as a maths teacher, so uh, geography really does take you in 
various different directions, not even the subject that you've studied in, in many cases. The professions that sort of people go into are, are as diverse as the degree course itself. quite a lot of stereotypes out there about the people that you meet here and the amount of work that you have to do but actually everyone's sort of really normal it's full of like-minded people and you do make really really good friends for life here.